Hey guys, welcome to Midas 101 with Jim Rose. Today we're going to go over uh, patch labeling. It's a really handy feature that a lot of people don't use, uh, but it really makes your life easy when you're trying to figure out what is what in the system. Basically, any of the boxes inside of your patching section can be relabeled for I.O. You can change it to what you want. So what I'm going to do is I've got a, a, a show file set up here that has a DL251 patched as part of the patch. It's red because we don't have the box attached, but there would be your 48 channels for your DL251. What we're going to do is we're going to go in and config this, and we're going to pretend, say we have an RPM record box, uh, RPM TV 248, that we're going to patch into ports 5 and 6. So we'll take this, and those are going to use a generic AES50 patch. So we're going to put them into the ports they are, but what, we're going to, what I tend to do when I attach generic AES devices is I assign the ID number the same as the port number. This allows me to, on the patching page, immediately figure out what port I'm talking about, if they're all generic. So once we've done that, now we have on our patching page DL251, DL251, and generic AES50 on two ports. But we know this is port 5 now, we know this is port 6. Where that comes in handy is if you load these boxes out of order, they can show up in different positions and you have to pay attention to what is what. If this said, I, you'd have to look at what your IDs were, make sure everything is correct, make sure it's all working for you. This has allowed me to know what ports my generic are in. But what, I've, what I would tend to start doing now is now, inside these patching page blocks, we know this is DL251A and DL251B. And we, and we know what port they're, that they're plugged into those boxes. So once we know what they are, I have tended to start doing this and in going into my labeling and changing it to something that makes more sense to me. Something like this. And then on this here, we know that port 5 is going to be the first 24 channels of the RPM. So we would relabel this RPM 1 through 24. So let's capitalize that. Just because I'm anal retentive. 1 through 24. And we will label this last box here. RPM 25. Through 48. By doing what we've done here now, and we save this in our patch, by the way these patches are saved in your show files, once this is here, now when we're jumping things around and we're looking for things, it's a lot faster to look at a block that says DL 251 1 to 24, DL 251 25 to 48, or RPM 1 to 24. So say hypothetically we wanted to record our DL251 48 channels into an RPM box and we wanted to do it on the preamp. Well now, just by looking at the screen, we can say, well, we want DL251 1 to 24 to go to the first 24 channels of the RPM box, and we want channels 25 to 48 to go to the other box of the RPM box. We can also now, if we go into input patching, we can say, well, we want DL251 1 to 48 to go to our channel inputs, and we want RPM 1 to 48 to go to our tape return inputs. We could do this this fast without thinking about it because looking at these numbers is way more intuitive than a bunch of AES 50s that you have to think twice to make sure you're grabbing the right thing. Also, if you have to do a cross patch during your show and you want to do a soft patch, you can look at these boxes and you don't have to guess. It's simple. It's 1 to 24, 25 to 48. A very easy thing to do. Once you hit store in your show file and you say store to overwrite scene, OK, those labeling will stay part of your patch at this point. You can save this as a preset if you need to cross over to something different. But now you've turned this patching page into something that's a lot more intuitive and a lot easier to use 
as an end user or if someone else walks up to the console as a guest engineer, they can find the things that they need. Thanks.